Today I'm going to talk to you about how to can. This is the canner that I use. It's an all canner. Um, basically it's got four different parts to it. It has, this is the base of the canner. This is the lid for the canner. Inside of here it has a little ring thing that your cans go on so that they don't break. And I'll show you how to use that once we start canning. I'm not actually going to can today. I'm just going to pretend to can to show you all the steps. Um, basically, you're going to start out with jars that are sterilized. The way that I sterilize them is I just wash them in the dishwasher. Whenever they get that hot, then they end up being sterilized. So I bring out my clean jars. I use mason or ball canning jars, whatever I've got, even old Classica jars. This is a pint-sized jar, and these are quart jars. This can will fit two levels worth of pint-sized jars. I can stack them on top of each other or one level worth of quart jars. And so once you get your jars ready to go, what you're going to do is you're going to fill it up. You're, this is a canning funnel. You can put it in the top of your jar there and that's going to allow you to get the food placed into your jar without getting the sides dirty because this rim around here needs to stay really clean for germs but it also needs to stay really clean so that it'll actually seal. So you're going to put your funnel in there and you'll put your food down in here. Once you finish putting your food in, if this is soup, you would just be done. If it's a vegetable, um, other than tomato sauce, if it's a vegetable that needs more fluid in it, then you would add boiling water at this point. Um, so you add your boiling water to it as well if it's a vegetable that needs boiling water. And then, you get these are the lids and the rings that go to the jars. The lids are going to be heat it up in a pot on the stove. You don't want to heat them to boiling. You just want to get them warm. If Whenever they get warm, then they're going to seal better. You can either use the little magnetic wand that sticks onto the lids to pull them out whenever they're warm, or if you don't have one, you can just drain it with a strainer. And then you just place the lid onto the jar. Put the ring on. Basically, you don't want to get it really tight. If you get a lid really tight, then it's really difficult to get off. You want to just kind of loosely get it and then turn it about half a turn. Not to where you're really straining, but to where it's loosely on. So that's how you fill up your jars. Once you fill them up, they're going to be hot. Since you have your boiling water or your soup or your tomato sauce, your pizza sauce, whatever it is that you're canning in there. And in order to put them into the canner, you just can use this. This is a jar lifter. This is how you'll also get them out of the canner. And you just place them into the canner. Whenever you fill up the canner, you do need to fill up the canner entirely. So you actually need jars all the way around and one jar in the middle. You can can with both quarts and pints at the same time. If you do that, you need to go with the time limit that the quart size jar is because that's going to need to cook longer than the pint size jar. If you're canning a tomato-based product or something, or pickles, something that's very acidic that does not need to actually be canned in a pressure canner, but only needs to be canned in a boiling water bath, then you don't need the lid. You just heat this up to boiling, make sure that the water is covering the lids, and boil it for as long as you need to for your boiling water bath. If you're actually canning something, which you're going to do with all of your low acidic vegetables, so all of your beans, green beans, your stews, your meats, most everything is going to be canned in a pressure canner that comes out of your garden just to keep your food safe. There's really bad bacteria that can get in to your vegetables and if you don't do it for the right amount of time then it can be dangerous. So it's really important that you do process this at the amount of time that it needs to be and at the amount of pounds of pressure that it needs to be. So once you get all of your jars in that you want and you will need to fill it up all the way. This is a demonstration so I haven't filled it up all the way. What you're going to do is you're going to get your lid and you just place it on your canner like this and this is a little notch here. This is why I love this canner. This is why I use it. You just spin the lid like this and this little ledge goes right underneath here. Then what you do is to secure the lid even further you bring these up and you want to do opposite sides at the same time so that you get an even amount onto your oops, onto your canner because you don't want to put too much pressure on one side of the lid and not on the other side of the lid. 
You twist them, not until they're really tight, but just until they're there, and then another twist. My husband thinks this looks like a flying space machine once I get it together. <laughs> you remember that, Eric? <laughs> He's doing my videotape. Okay, so you have all of these ready to go right here, and you turn your eye on, and then you wait until you get a whole lot of steam coming out of here. Whenever it first starts, it's going to kind of be spitting out a little bit of water, and then it'll have a slow stream. You want to wait until it is really steaming. Once it's really steaming, you have a weight here. And you'll see the numbers 5, 10, and 15 pounds of pressure. Most things you're going to put at 10 pounds of pressure. So if you want to cook at 10 pounds of pressure, you're going to place it on here. Now, this does not mean that you're at 10 pounds of pressure yet. You actually, there's a gauge right here. And once you put this weight on to get the pounds of pressure, then this not this right here is going to start going up. So it will slowly climb until it gets to 10 pounds of pressure. Once you get to 10 or 11 pounds of pressure, I'll let mine go up to right about 11 or 12 pounds of pressure. Then I cut my heat back to, on my eye, I keep it at high and then I go down to 6. Whenever I go down to 6, it keeps it right at 10 pounds of pressure for me. Now it is important that you keep it at, if, it, if it's supposed to be at 10 pounds of pressure, that you keep it at 10 pounds of pressure because you do want it to be there for the amount of time that needs to be. So don't set your timer or start counting your canning time until it's actually reached the 10. Once it reaches the 10, if you're supposed to can for an hour and 10 minutes, I just set my timer on my microwave and it beeps at me an hour and 10 minutes later. Once this, this gets very, very hot, so don't touch it at all. Once you get done, let it cool down. It doesn't need to cool down completely, completely, but it will not let you open the lid until it's cooler. Whenever you're removing the lid, you're going to do it the exact same way. You're going to twist on opposite sides. And then you're just going to twist your lid off. Make sure that you don't touch anything whenever you twist it off. I always have to get a hot pad out right here. So you just twist it and then you lift it off. These jars will be hot inside of here and I just pull out the jars using the Stark remover and I put them onto hot pads. Whenever they first come out they may or may not be sealed. The way that they actually seal is as they're cooling off then it's going to seal. And you're going to know that a jar is sealed. Right now this one's not. See how that goes up and down? Let me get a jar out that I've actually canned down here. This is a Cuban black beans that I just canned. See how this doesn't go down at all and it's actually dipped in in the middle? That means that this jar is sealed. You can label your jars on the lids and I do suggest doing that with what you can and the year that you can it or the year and the month that you can it. Make sure that you don't touch them until they're completely cool. Once they've completely cooled, you can look and see whether or not they've sealed. You'll hear all these little pop, pop, pop things, and those are good sounds. That means that they're sealing. If for some reason your jar does not seal, then you can just put it in the refrigerator or if you're doing another load to, to can the next day, or if you're going to do another canning load anyway, then you can just I change out the lid and the ring, make sure that it's completely clean around the rim, and then recan it. And the other thing is, I did forget to mention one thing. Um, after you've put your food into here, before you're canning it, you do want to, I'm not sure where mine is, but use a plastic something, and you go around the sides like this, and that gets rid of any bubbles that are in your liquid, which can keep a jar from canning as well. All right. I hope that that helps y'all be able to learn how to can. I'm going to have some recipes that I'll get up soon and do more details about how to can specific items, but this is in general how to can.